Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul's United Church of Christ here in Wassa, Wisconsin. We are so pleased to have you all joining us this day. We do have several announcements for this morning. First and foremost, Bible study will begin here again. It will be virtually uh, presented, but there's also been some interest in doing a Bible study in person. So please let us know here at the church if you would be interested in participating in that. Sunday school for at least the first quarter of this school year will also be done virtually. However, we will be meeting with the confirmation class and their parents soon to determine if confirmation will be held virtually or in person as well. So please stay tuned and please keep informed of the things that are happening here at St. Paul's. Again, we are so pleased to have you joining us to this day. Please join with me then in our opening hymn. It is on page 72 of your hymnal, or of course, it's printed in our bulletin. To God be the glory. such a world. Let our path not be narrow and self-preoccupied. Let us build broad highways where all may walk together in beauty, tending the gardens along the way. As we journey on through pleasure and pain, commitment and betrayal, keep us mindful that we do not walk alone, that you are presence in our midst. 
that in Jesus Christ you came and shared our common lot, that you walk beside us and dance ahead of us into the future. Deliver us, we pray, from the mirror of grudges and regrets. We yearn to break away from all that to come running into your open arms, to your arms that are spread wide with mercy and with acceptance. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, whose story brings life to a dying world, hope to a despairing people, justice and love to a realm of strife. Be with me then for a moment of opening prayer, which you will also find printed in your bulletin. Igniting presence. Your spark is here. Your flame burns amidst us. We recognize that we are standing on holy ground. For all creation is holy, and all who abide in it are called to be awakened in awareness and care. Help us to notice the flame of your passion for healing and wholeness everywhere. Help us to turn our heads and be attentive to the lights of your constant compassion around us and among us. Catch our eyes by the flickering of your grace that is in the goodness and mercy of communion and love. And help us always to remember that you are with us. Amen. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. May the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Because of social distancing, of course, we can't shake hands or hug our family and friends, really. So I just encourage you to do a throwback again to the 60s and 70s, Peace, my brothers and sisters. Well, kids, if you were here today, I would be calling you forward, and I'd be having you hold something very heavy. That heavy object is right here. This is a piece of sandstone. I was looking, actually, for a brick, but this even works better. This is one solid piece of stone that has been through the centuries squashed down into this solid hard piece of rock. Now we all know that sand, if we're in the beach, right, we're playing in the sand, we all know that sand is unstable. But if we add water to that sand, you can actually make a sand castle or whatever you want to make out of that sand. It can get pretty hard. Well, through the years and through the centuries, sand has been compacted down with pressure and has created sandstone. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of St. Paul's is made out of this exact sandstone. This one comes from outside. I just brought it in. This is solid. On this, buildings are built. On this, you could build your life. On this, well, it's a, it is hard. It's as hard as can be. But on sand, what happens? Even if you use water in your sand and you made a sand castle, when the waves come ashore, what happens to that sand? It gets washed away, doesn't it? only through years and years of pressure and compacting that sand to create this stone. When it's sand, of course, it's not stable. It washes away. 
when it's solid like this, you can build a building on it or a building out of it, just like St. Paul's is. My hope for you today is that you build your life on the solid rock, the solid sand that's been compacted by years of pressure and years of growth and years of change and years of history because it's on that rock that I hope you build your life this day. So be with me for just a brief moment of prayer. Wondrous God, may our life be built on something very solid like the faith we have in Jesus. Amen. So my gospel lesson today comes from Matthew 16. I'm going to begin with verse 21 and read through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And on the third day be raised. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any of you want to become my followers, let you deny yourselves and take up your cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. And this ends my lesson today. Thanks be then to God. Amen. Please join with me. First verse only, of course, of one of the most favorite hymns here at St. Paul's, How Great Thou Art. to a young woman who has come to have her taxes done. 
Phil says to the young woman, leave it to me. I'll get your taxes in an okay place. And the woman says, what? Then with the back of his hand, beside his mouth, he adds, just as soon as my audit is finished, then you'll get my undivided attention. The young woman looks around his office at some pictures of Phil in exotic locations and says somewhat suspiciously, you take a lot of trips to the Cayman Islands, Phil. And Phil says, pretty great, right? Then he adds, oh, Phil's legally dead, file for boat, going by Dennis now. Then he defiantly pushes a piece of paper into the paper shredder. Oh, you're not wanting to see this, he explains. And the commercial ends with a young woman standing to leave while he says, while she says, I don't think this is gonna work. Okay, I thought of that commercial because in the commercial, Phil is faking his own death and faking it never quite makes it, does it? You can't be fake and have integrity and get through life. Now, there is some truth in the fact that I do believe you can fake it till you make it, but that's another sermon, another old story. But for today, Jesus and his disciples are once again at Caesarea Philippi. Their ministry to this point has been a stunning success. Crowds are pushing in on them everywhere they go. People eagerly reach out to touch this teacher from Nazareth. The disciples themselves are all caught up in the excitement too. Then at Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked a serious question, and we talked about this last week. He says, who do you say that I am? This is one of the most dramatic moments in all the scriptures, I think. It is Simon Peter who answers enthusiastically, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus changes the subject. He begins to tell them that the crowds will soon turn against him. He will be crucified. And on the third day, he will rise from the dead. The disciples don't know what to make of all of this. Simon Peter takes Jesus aside and says, Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Jesus' response speaks some of the best known and most challenging words in the entire Bible. Get behind me, Satan. You are not on the side of God, but of man. Wow. Strong language. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. So, what does this mean for our lives? It means not just going through the motions. It means not faking it. It means dedicating your life with integrity and becoming one of Jesus' disciples. The keys to new life are found in these words that we've heard so many times before. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. But what then is it that Christ is actually asking us to do? Well, let me begin here. The first step to a new life 
according to Jesus, is to deny oneself. That's hard, isn't it? To forget oneself. I mean, we live in a me, me, me culture. And why not? Every TV commercial may tells us, and we're worth it. Have you ever heard anyone described as self-involved? Self-involved people are wrapped up in themselves or their own best interest. They hardly give a thought to what other people are experiencing. You know anyone like that? The truth is that all of us, to one extent or another, are like that. What if our thoughts weren't focused on ourselves and our need to achieve, our need to belong, our need to be happy, our need to be significant? What if we could change our mind's focus from us, 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 and put our needs into God's plan for this world? What if we could surrender everything we have and everything we are to God and God's will for our life. Denying oneself or forgetting oneself is a difficult thing to do. We like to be in control. But surrounding oneself, but surrendering oneself to God is the first step in an authentic new life. Does God rule your life, or are you, are you like Phil in this TV commercial, just faking it? But there's a second step to a new life, and it is even more challenging. Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross. We heard that command all of our lives. But what does that mean to take up our cross? I suspect that it has something to do with our addiction to comfort. Some people never want to leave their comfort zone. They never want to do anything that would require any sacrifice or move them to something that they think they are uncomfortable with. Forget about asking them to lead a third grade Sunday school class. Forget about them asking to invite maybe their next door neighbor to church. Oh, pastor, I couldn't do that. They might be offended. Well, yes, they might be. But on the other hand, you might be changing their entire life. You simply cannot serve Christ and always remain in your comfort zone. There are people right outside of the doors here at St. Paul's all the time who are facing tremendous challenges, loneliness, addiction, depression. There's an old saying, when the going gets tough, the tough what? Get going? One cynic has changed it. He says, when the going gets tough, the tough they, they just leave. And that seems to be the case. It, it even happened to Jesus. As the way got harder and harder, the numbers of those who followed dwindled. Yet, if he had been unwilling to lay down his life, the world would never know the love of God. On the other hand, if those early disciples had not picked up Jesus' cross and followed after all, we would still today not know about God's love. Over the ages, since those early disciples gave their lives to broadcast the news of God's love, a host of other people 
have given up everything to ensure that the gospel message has endured. But here is the truth, the situation. If you and I do not pick up that cross in our time, in our generation, if you and I do not make those hard choices and assume those difficult responsibilities that are required to ensure the Church of Jesus Christ accomplishes its mission, our children's children will not know the old, old stories of Jesus and his love. And that's sad, but it's true. It is up to you. Many of us don't want to do anything that requires us to sacrifice our time or our resources. A worker in an inner city mission gave many years to a most discouraging ministry. A friend came to him one day and said, why don't you just give up? This is breaking you. Why don't you just leave it all? And the man replied, wow, there are times when I want nothing more than to leave it all. But there's a man on a cross with love in his eyes who won't let me. Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, take up their cross. And then he adds three more words, and follow me. Following Jesus means living a life of loving service. When you take up Jesus' cross, you are taking up his heart. His heart, his priorities, his values, his love. Your journey through life becomes a journey to honor his sacrifice and protect his heart. You are taking up the very purpose and driving ambition of Jesus' life to share God's love to the world. That's your cross, my friends. And Jesus challenges you to pick up that cross, whatever you need to sacrifice, whatever you need to lie down in order to pick up that cross, do it. Then, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will truly, truly discover new life. You won't need to fake it anymore. Surrender your life to God this day. Amen. Please join with me. Another one of those favorite hymns here at St. Paul's, It Is Well With My Soul. Ministries of St. Paul's United Church of Christ here in Wausau. 
our media ministry is really very successful these days, but it costs money, of course, to get out in all the venues that we are. Our needs for the diaper depot and the food pantry still continue. Matter of fact, they're probably more so than ever. So please give generously to St. Paul's. Please be with me for a moment of prayer. Almighty and wondrous God, you have gifted us in so many ways. May we respond to our call to ministry by gifting back of our time, our talent, our resources, and yes, even our dollars. Amen. I would invite you then to share with me too in the prayer of dedication that you will find printed in your bulletin. May the holy ground on which we stand empower our steps toward the journey of healing in which we have been placed as a people. With hearts aflame, with good intentions, we give from our abundance and celebrate the ways of your Holy Spirit, which is alive in our souls. Bless this offering. May it be used toward healing and new life. Amen. Please join with me then in the doxology. Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Join with me also in the commissioning. People of God, may every step you take into this world be a step toward new life. We will go steeped in curiosity and peace. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine about you. May the Lord give you peace, grace, and love for this day in God's love. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here once again at St. Paul's United Church of Christ. We really do appreciate you. Please continue to send in the, the notes and the cards that helps us to know who's watching and what you're really thinking of our, our progress that we're making here. So um, be safe. Take care. God bless. Love you. And bye for now. Thank you.